Hi guys and girls, so we're gonna get started with some basic HTML in part 1 of this series. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is used for de defining the content of a web page. I'm gonna go through some of the commonly used elements that is also good to know before starting with React Native. And as I said in the introduction, when we start programming apps later, you won't actually use HTML. Instead, you will use something called JSX, but in order to understand JSX, you need a basic understanding of HTML. And now, if you already have experience with HTML, you can go ahead and skip this part of the, this guide, uh, because this is only for uh, beginners of HTML. And now, if you've never written any line of code at all previously, the first thing you're gonna need is a text editor. I'm using Sublime Text and I can recommend it. So head over to sublimetext.com, go down here and click download. And just download the application and then install it. It's just a normal installer, so you just click next, 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 and it will install Sublime Text for you. Now I'm just gonna go down and go ahead and close down the Sublime Text browser window. The next thing you want to do is create a folder anywhere on your computer. You can name the folder My First Web Page. After that, open up Sublime Text. Go up to File, click on Open Folder, and then browse and select the folder you just created. Then inside Sublime Text, right click the folder and choose New File. Save the file as index.html. Now the index.html is always the first page that the browser will look for and then load. Now I'm just gonna go through my workspace here for this part of this series. Just a little bit quick. Uh, I'm gonna keep, keep the text editor to the right here at all time and my browser to the left. Another thing you will notice is in my browser URL, it says 127.0.0.18080. That's because I'm using a local host. Now, if you're using a local host as well already, go ahead and do that. If you're not doing that, you don't need to install one. Instead, what you're going to do is right-click the index.html file you just saved and click Open Containing Folder. Right-click the file again and choose Open With. Now you can open the file with Chrome or whatever browser you prefer. So this is going to be the web page we're going to be working on. And every time you make a change, go over here and click Reload. I'm going to close down that one. So now everything we will work with in this part of this tutorial is tags, HTML tags. So just to give you an example of what a tag actually is, I'm going to create a tag that doesn't even exist in HTML, but Let's name it my tag. Inside my tag, I'm going to add some content, some text, and then I'm going to close my tag. Now, every tag in HTML consists of an opening tag and a closing tag. Within these two tags, you have content. You always open a tag by typing smaller than sign, followed by the name of the tag, then greater than sign, followed by the content. And then the closing tag. And the closing tag looks exactly the same as the opening tag, except you close it off with a backslash like that. So this is a basic HTML tag, and we're gonna go through a couple of them. Now there's a lot of tags in HTML and we will not cover every tag there is, but we will cover some of the basics and basically what you need to know to just get started with React Native later. And I also recommend that you really follow this part of this tutorial because it's going to make it a lot easier to work with EASX later and you're going to get a deeper understanding. Now another form of a tag is a P tag. It's written like this. Don't worry, we'll go through this later. This is just to show you like how to write the actual tag. And this is a div tag. This is a h1 tag. 
And as you can see, they all follow the same pattern. Every, every tag is open and then closed. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a basic HTML document. So go ahead and type the smaller than sign and followed by HTML and then press tab. And when you do that sublime text will create this HTML document for you. Now the first thing you will notice is the doc type HTML. That simply just tells the browser that will read this file that this is an HTML document type. After that you can see the opening tag for HTML and at the bottom of the file the closing tag for HTML. Within the HTML tag there is a head tag with a title tag inside it and also there is a body tag. Everything within the body tag is what will be visible inside a web page. Now I'm just going to add some spacing here to make it a bit easier to read. Like that. So you can start by just defining some text here just to show you that this is what's going to actually end up in a web page. Um, so everything from here down to here is what will be visible here. So if I reload here, you can see we get the text right there. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit like that. So now let's uh, start going over a couple of commonly used uh, HTML tags. We can start by creating the H tag, which stands for a header tag. This is simply used to create headers in your web page text headers. And we can create a couple of headers. You can create an H2, sorry, H2 header, and also an H3 header. And as you can see, they decrease in size the larger the number. So this is how we create a simple header in HTML. Now below the header, normally we'd use something like a P tag, which stands for paragraph. Um, so just uh, can type I'm a paragraph and close it up. And a paragraph is just simple text. And as you can see, none of these elements are styled with colors or anything like that. And we will not cover that in this part. That will be the CSS part. Because HTML is just the basic markup, only the content, not styled in any way. So everything will just, uh, will just uh, be stacked below each other like this, uh, without any styling, and then it will not look good. But that's uh, how it's supposed to be. Now the next thing we can look at creating is the header tag. Uh, it's written like this. The header tag was introduced in HTML and it's uh, used for defining the header of a web page. Now within a header you would normally have something like for example a logo type maybe. So we can go ahead and create an image which will you would use normally for creating a logo type. So you're just going to create an image tag followed by a source. Now as you can see the image tag does not consist of an opening tag and a closing tag. Instead I'm opening the image tag and closing it within the same tag. And now this green part is called an attribute, and this is the source attribute for the image tag. In the source attribu attribute, we're going to give the image a source for the image to load. Now this can be a file on uh, your file system, on, on your local client, or it can be an uh, image from a uh, web page or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and give it an image from a web page. And as you can see, we get an image right there. We will also use image later in React Native for creating images inside our applications. Now, the next thing you can look at is uh, the nav tag. It was also introduced in HTML5 and is used for creating the navigation of a web page. Something that's commonly used within a nav tag is a um, UL tag. It stands for unordered lists and it's exactly what it sounds like an unordered list inside the ul tag you will add an li item 
which stands for list item. So if I add something here, let's say item one, you can see that we get a list item. Now within the list item, we can create an href. An href is actually a link to another page or another page on this web page. So it can link to yeah, basically any web page you want or a page on your own web page. So we're gonna go ahead and create an href. It's written like this. And let's just tell it to link to page2.html. Don't worry, we can add a backslash here too. We will create this uh, page later, just to create a simple link. And um, within the opening tag and the closing tag, you will define what the, the link will be named or how it will be visible. So let's just say link to page 2, because that's exactly what it is. And if we click here now, we get an error because the page cannot be found, as you can see. But don't worry, we'll create it later. Now, another commonly used element is a text input. So go ahead and create an input. Give it a type of text and then close it. As you can see now, we got this text input where we can write stuff. This is also something we will use later in React Native. Something that's commonly used within an input type is a placeholder. So go ahead and create a placeholder. We can just say name. As you can see now, we get this gray text telling us what to write. So if I start writing now, it disappears. And if I delete this text, it reappears again. So that's just to tell the user what to write in the text input. And another commonly used element is the select tag, which is a select list. So go ahead and create a select tag, opening tag and a closing tag. Within the select list, you normally use options. So we can create the list here of, let's say, cars. Just create an option. We can say Audi, BMW, and as you can see now, we get a list where we can choose between cars. Now, another thing that's commonly used within a uh, select option is a value. So we can give the Volvo a value of 1 and Audi a value of 2. Now, these values, you don't have to worry about them, but if you were working with a backend developer, they will use these values to save the data in a database. But we can delete them for now if we won't need them. Another common element is the button element, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a simple button. So if you save your file now, you can see you get a button. And now, as you can see, the text input and the select list and the button are all next to each other. Now, there is a way to get them below each other without using any kind of CSS or anything, which we will cover later. Instead, we can use one of the most commonly used tags. It's uh, called a div, and it stands for uh, document division. And that's exactly what it is. It's a container for wrapping content in different areas of your web page. So let's, let's go up to the input type text and create a div opening tag above it and a div closing tag below it. As you can see now, the text input actually got its own row. That's because we wrapped a div around it. So it, it gets divided into its own, own part. Now we can do the same thing with any element we want. We can uh, wrap the select list within a div like this. And the same thing will happen. The select list will get its own part of the web page, its own section. And if you think that this looks like a lot of code to you or unfamiliar, 
don't worry if you type this like oh, four or five times you get start to you start to get used to it and it's it's really like any language you know if you speak it enough write it enough you will uh, become fluent in it so you you will get used to it and that's it that's how to create a couple of basic html tags the last thing we can do before we end this part of this guide is create a new file and we will create the link to page2.html you can save the file as page2.html and type smaller than sign followed by html and then tab we can give this page title page2 and in the body let's create just a paragraph say i am page2 let's close the p tag off and if i reload the browser now and click on page 2 you can see that we got the link working to page 2 and if i click the back button we get redirected back to the home page and if i refresh the browser we're still on the home page <clears throat> also we can create a title for home page one this is not really necessary but it's what you see up here so now we get the title for page one if we go to page two we get a title for page two so now we get an actual uh, really simple and ugly web page with some uh, html content that we can link back and forward in the next part we will cover styling html documents with css and we'll also look a little bit at flex which uh, we will use to make the layouts responsive later in react native <laughs>